Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell laptop. This is a Dell Inspire 3000 series. The exact model for this one is a Dell 15 and you can find it right on the bottom stick. It says Dell Inspire 15 3511. And the model for the exact uh, regulatory model is a P112F. All right, and in this video, I'm gonna take you on a step-by-step -step how you can open it up and how you can add, remove, and upgrade the RAM for your laptop. We have upgraded this laptop up to 32 gig with no problem, and that's the really sweet spot if you wanna overdo it by 16 gig. It is recommended for normal use. Just gonna give you a little tips during the video and at the end of the video for, in case if you upgrade your RAM and you don't see anything on the screen, so to solve those issues for anybody that faces them. All right, first thing first, we're gonna flip it upside, power it up, flip it upside down, and we're gonna grab ourselves a screwdriver set. I'll be using an iFixit screwdriver set, and from this tool set, I'll be using a Phillips number one. If you get the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, get the basic set, and for the opening tools, I'll be using a metallic guitar picker. A guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. All right, and this cover, uh, it was open before. I see a different size of a screw that somebody put in here. And they mentioned that one of the screw on the bottom left is being glued. So, but all the screws are the same size. Only two screws from on the bottom cover will never come out um, because they have a, something called a C-lock. Those are the one in the corner back here and the corner back over on the other side. The hinge screws, we call them. All right, so first we're gonna remove the mid back, two on the sides and three in the front end. So go ahead and remove all these screws. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. But the screw in here, this one is, is not coming out, so I don't mind how much I rotate because it's glued down. All right. The reason for the C-lock is, I'm going to show you guys here, as soon as we start rotating this one, it's going to push the cover away from the palm rest. So you can see that nice gap right there. So keep rotating until you hear that click sound. You want to do the same thing on the other one. There we go. Now that we got this C-lock in there, so we can see that we can actually open it up. But we're still not going to do anything here. So I'm going to pull this cover up, a little tension on the cover. And we're gonna stick the guitar pick between the bottom cover and the palm rest in here. And we're gonna twist it like this and do this all around in the front end too. Work yourself to the next corner. Make sure you remove the screw. I have it in because it's being glued. Once you do the front and the side, you can just lift it up, wiggle it around, and it will release the rest. And we can see they have put a, some kind of epoxy in here. So, oh yeah. Anyway, all right, once we remove the cover, we can see right away that we have two RAM DIMMs installed on the board. Now, to remove the RAMs is really easy. First thing, before we do anything on the RAM, I'm gonna go over the battery. People always say, why don't you disconnect the battery? You do not need to disconnect the battery if you wanna do RAM upgrade or storage upgrade. It's absolutely not needed. You don't have to worry about the static discharge. When you open it, if you wanna discharge yourself, just touch the corner hinge metals. These are grounded and you're fine. You keep one hand in there for one or two seconds and that's it. You cannot kill the RAMs with a static discharge. They are really okay. I've been doing this for a very, very long time, over 20 years, so no problem. Anyway, but if you don't want to be paranoid and you want to, you think that you're going to drop a metallic object on the board and stuff like that, then sure, go ahead and disconnect the battery by pulling this connector backward evenly. And when you want to put it back in, evenly in front and pinch it in there evenly. Don't put it sideways. All right. Anyway, so the RAM right here, if you want to remove it, you have to pull these two triggers away from each other, just like this. And the RAM will pop out in 45 degree angle, just like that. All you need to do is to grab it in the same 45 degree angle and pull it out in a 45 degree angle. Do not pull the RAM up towards the ceiling, otherwise, you're gonna break the RAM or the DIM. Always slide it out in 45 degree angle that you pull out. So this is an eight gig. Same thing in here. Pull it away and the RAM will come out. I don't know what is this thing doing here. Maybe you wanna put this over the component, not on the 
in there. All right, and this one is again is an eight gig and eight gig. So let me see if this is an eight gig. Yeah, they are eight gig. So we have a sixteen gig in here. You can change, replace them. These are a DDR four. You can put a sixteen gig and sixteen gig to have a thirty two gig dual channel. But if you have an eight gig only, add another eight gig. So now you have a sixteen gig dual channel memory. You can put a sixteen gig plus an eight gig. That will be fine too, with no problem. Just your dual channel will be up to part up to eight gig, not up to sixteen gig. All right. To put the RAM in, make sure the notch on the RAM matches the notch on the DIMM. So if you try to put it backward in, the notches, the cuts, they don't match, so the RAM will not go through. All right. So make sure you bring in forty-five degree angle inside the connector and towards the board. Same thing here, forty-five degree inside the board. If you do not put it in a forty-five degree angle, you put it a little sideways. You put it in, you see this trigger stays open and it's not, you don't want this. You're not going to kill the board pretty much if you power on, you're not going to pause, you're not going to show anything, you're not going to shorten anything like that. So if whatever way you shorten because the battery is connected, nothing's going to happen. All right, just put it back in, in the correct position. And you don't need to put the bottom cover to power on the laptop. You can just power it on, open it up, flip it the other way around, just like what I'm going to do here. Just open it up and power it on. I don't know if it has any juice on it or not. I'll press F2 to go to the BIOS. I hope it does have some power. If you disconnect the battery, you plug it back in, it's going to reset the CMOS to a default, so it might take a little longer to, for it to boot. So be patient. I'm just going to spam it on F2 so I get to go to the BIOS. So wait up to 30 seconds. I don't know if it has any charge on it or not. I'm going to try to power it. I didn't power it. I just powered it on. So I'm going to tap on F2. I think it doesn't have any power battery on it. So let me get the charger for this. Oh, actually, it did. It did boot up. Oh. So it did. So it took about what forty seconds for it to boot up. So I'm going to the to the bio. So don't panic when it doesn't. It takes a little time, so that's fine. It does have charge on it, so I didn't have to get the charger. It just was. It took a little longer for it to boot. So. You can just check it. The fan does not spin until it really heats up. So that's fine. It's, it does get really warm up. So, and the RAMs are in place and it's working fine. All right. So you can just shut it down by holding the power button. And what you want to do here, let's say if yours after 40 seconds or one minute, it doesn't boot up anything on the screen, just switch the RAM place and put the old one in here, the new one in here, or just Switch them and power on and wait another few seconds, one minute, and it's going to post with no problem. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, always feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Once you finish with the bottom cover, put it on. Make sure you pinch them. You're going to hear those big trigger sounds or click sounds. Those are the clips that are getting locked in. And then tighten up the screws on the back. It will pull the cover to itself and place the rest of the screws on the bottom cover. And this is how you can upgrade your RAM for your Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.